This video will display the surgical management of a 61-year-old female with metastatic colon cancer to the liver. The primary tumor was located in the transverse colon and the liver metastases were located in segments 5 and 6. She received neoadjuvant chemotherapy and was then brought to the operating room. The ultrasound probe had been used to mark out a margin around the tumor. The critical view was obtained by dissecting out the cystic duct and artery. Clips were placed on the artery and it was ligated with a vessel sealer. Clips were then placed on the cystic duct. The duct was then transected using the robotic scissor. The attachments between the gallbladder and the liver were taken down using the scissor. Traction was used to maintain the dissection within the avascular plane. The segment 5 resection was then begun using the robotic scissor. As small vessels were encountered, they were cauterized using the scissor. The dissection was continued perpendicular to the margins that were created using the ultrasound probe. The scissor is placed into the liver at 90 degree angles to ensure that the margin remains clear. The vessel sealer is used to seal larger vessels. Advanced insufflation with smoke evacuation is utilized to clear the smoke created by cauterizing the liver parenchyma. Traction is maintained on the specimen so that the deepest portion can be transected. Fluorescence angiography is utilized to assess the margin and there is no evidence of tumor. The specimen is placed into a pouch and into the left upper quadrant of the abdomen. The argon beam is used to cauterize the liver bed. Attention is then directed towards segment six. The attachments between the liver and the abdominal wall and the liver and the diaphragm are taken down sharply with the scissor. The ultrasound probe is then dropped into the abdomen through one of the port sites. Ultrasound guided imaging is used to visualize the hepatic tumor and a negative margin is made around the mass using the cautery. As with the segment five resection, the robotic scissor is used to cut through the liver parenchyma and cauterize small vessels. The dissection continues circumferentially, being careful to maintain the margin. The vessel sealer was again used to ligate larger vessels. Once the majority of the resection was completed, the margin was again assessed using fluorescence angiography and visible tumor was not seen. The resection was completed using a combination of the scissor and the robotic vessel sealer. The liver edge was cauterized with the scissor. A small defect had been noted in the diaphragm. A barbed suture was introduced into the abdomen. Utilizing a robotic needle driver as well as the vessel sealer, the defect was closed in a running fashion using the barbed suture. The needle was removed from the abdomen and the specimen was placed into a separate pouch. The argon beam was used to cauterize the liver edge. The specimens were placed into the uppermost portion of the abdomen. Hemostatic products were placed. A 12 millimeter port was placed into the left flank. The omentum was placed into the upper abdomen to bring the transverse colon into view. The iliocolic axis is placed on stretch. The peritoneum at the base of the iliocolic vessels is opened and a medial to lateral dissection is performed. This dissection brings the duodenum into view. The duodenum is fully mobilized so that a high ligation can be performed. The iliocolic vessels are ligated at their origin using the vessel sealer. The remaining attachments around the duodenum and the right kidney are taken down. At this point, the medial to lateral dissection had been completed across the hepatic flexure. The omentum is brought down, exposing the gastrocolic ligament. The lesser sac is opened using the vessel sealer, and the previous dissection is encountered immediately. With the duodenum being completely mobilized, the hepatic flexure can be taken down quite quickly. The remaining lateral attachments are then taken down using the vessel sealer. Starting at the previously transected iliocolic vessels, the mesentery of the terminal ilium is taken down using the vessel sealer. The mesentery is ligated all the way to the bowel wall. The ilium is grasped and easily reaches up toward the transverse colon. The omentum is mobilized away from the transverse colon distal to the tumor. 
This allows the involved omentum to be included with the specimen. The remaining transverse colon mesentery is then transected using the vessel sealer. This is done until the bowel wall is reached. An instrument is placed under the colon, ensuring that all attachments have been taken down. A small omental band is taken down to complete the dissection. The patient is injected with 4 milliliters of endocyanin green. Well vascularized transverse colon is then transected using the robotic stapler with a green cartridge. Once the transverse colon has been transected, a blue robotic cartridge is placed across the terminal ileum. The well vascularized small bowel is transected using the stapler. The specimen is placed above the liver on the right side. This maneuver clears the area in preparation for formation of the anastomosis. It also proves that the specimen is completely free of all of its attachments. The area is irrigated and no bleeding is seen. Some of the omental attachments are taken down so that the transverse colon easily reaches the right side. The terminal ileum is aligned with the transverse colon in an isoperistaltic fashion. The anti-mesenteric border of the small bowel is removed. A colotomy is then made in the transverse colon, approximately 10 centimeters away from the staple line. A green robotic cartridge is placed into the terminal ileum and the transverse colon. This firing of the stapler creates the ileocolic channel. The stapler is then reintroduced to lengthen the anastomosis. At this point, the anastomosis is approximately 11 centimeters in length. With the help of an assistant, the remaining enterotomy is grasped. Once aligned, a green robotic cartridge is used to close the remaining enterotomy. The small anastomotic edge is removed from the abdomen. Fluorescence angiography is again utilized, and the anastomosis is seen to be well vascularized without any defects. There was a small amount of bleeding from the final staple line that was fired. Figure of eights are placed using absorbable suture. Placing these sutures to obtain hemostasis can be done quite easily using the robotic platform. Fibrin glue is then placed over the staple lines. The omentum is brought down to cover the anastomosis. The specimen is then brought down to the lower abdomen in preparation for extraction through the fan and steel incision. The liver specimens are also brought down to the lower abdomen. She was discharged home on postoperative day three. All of the margins were negative. The suprapubic extraction site was well healed at her one month postoperative visit.